Okay, so welcome to part two. This is uh, the Tower of Power episode uh, section of hopefully a multi-part series. Now we're doing breaking down um, our the Pints and Amiga live stream kind of equipment setup. I've got my long little pokey here, uh, arm, mic arm, that I'm going to point out some things with. So, let's get started. Uh, down here on the bottom, uh, this is a Behringer Xenon 1002B. Uh, simple little uh, audio mixer there. Uh, nothing too fancy. I think it's five mono channel and four stereo channel, but it's shared. Uh, so we usually keep our, this is our CD aux from our 4000 uh, CD-ROM setup, which I'll show you that in the when I break down the 4000D. Uh, this is our master uh, game uh, input from all of the machines. And then we have, of course, all of our four uh, mic inputs here. My, my dad here, me, and then guests, and a spare one. So that's kind of brief overall, the main volume here, of course, and all of our quarter inch output, quarter inch inputs, RCA input for the CD-ROM, all of that good jazz. Uh, over here is the USB switch box we use to switch the uh, keyboard input for the Amigas that have uh, keyboard adapters. So we use USB sum adapters for our 4000 and our 600 and our 1200. So that will switch using only one wireless keyboard. Oops. Down here along the bottom right here uh, with these nice little red dots here. This is our eight way uh, HDMI split box. So that helps split out all of our signal and everything to go to our various uh, outputs and everything. We're only currently using two. Our master HDMI scaler here, kind of the master lock. We have our VGA uh, input here with switch box. Uh, this is for She-Hulk, our Amiga 600, and our Dreamcast. You can see the labeling there. So because our master scaler has VGA, two HDMI, component composite, all of that good stuff, uh, it's a relatively cheaper uh, scaler that we found on eBay a couple years back, so we've had it for a long time. I don't even remember the model of it anymore. This here, these two switch boxes, are for our port 1 and port 2 on the controller slash mouse ports for all of the Amigas. So we have the 4000, the Vampire 500, She-Hulk, and then soon to be the uh, NCC 1200, that's our Amiga 1200. So these are straight through serial switch boxes um, for switching between like your serial printer or other serial devices usually used for PCs but they're straight through. Then we hook up all of the Amiga mouse ports and game ports using straight through serial cable like this. So, and because this one, the switch box that we have is female, is male out, we use these female to female just straight through. That's the key though. Um, if you want to do this on your own, this has to be straight through serial. No, no modem or anything, or you'll fry your ports. Um, so I want to thank uh, JC, Peter on Facebook, for giving me this idea and letting me know that this would work and convincing me to try it out. And sure enough, it works. So it is a godsend in terms of having one joystick, one mouse, or or, or anything in switching between all these different machines without having to unplug a bunch of stuff. Over here back onto the right is our two other two scalers. So these two are, this one is for the MSX and this one is for the Amiga 500's native output. These are just simple little 30 to $40 uh, US uh, scalers from Amazon. They do a wonderful job uh, in general. Uh, they have audio output, 
several uh, switching capabilities. They have SCART in the back as well as HDMI in the back. Up here is our HDMI switch box. So everything has its own input. The 4000 has a direct uh, HDMI input because it has an RG RTG card in it, which I'll explain on our 4000D uh, video. Uh, the, all, of, all of the inputs eventually get converted either to VGA down here or HDMI up here. And you either switch between here or there and everything eventually passes through this master scaler. Up here, which I'm going to raise the little monopod here so you can see. This is our RCA switch box. So it's a five quart switch box. It has all RCA in and then one out. So there's the 4,000, 500, 600, 1200 Dreamcast and MSX share because they use a piggyback connection and that all feeds down comes out we'll wrap around the back here so it comes out down and comes into our di box there this is a radial trim 2 di box uh, it's a pro audio di box uh, very nice it has uh, an art, a level knob there multiple inputs and outputs there they're tandem comes out hits the uh, XLR output goes right here into our game channel there and then the master feeds out and goes over to our capture and goes into the audio interface let's go back around in the back here Set that down so this spaghetti's Western of a mess it's actually not that complicated we come out of our master scaler here and it has all of our imp some go directly input like in like the 4000 and the component uh, input from the Dreamcast uh, and then that comes out goes down here to our master splitter one signal goes down and goes over to the capture machine the other one comes down and hits a final kind of master sync scaler. This one goes over and up to the TV. And the only reason why we have this one in tandem, and it's separate only feeding the TV, is because our nice fancy 4K TV and this one get a little mad about certain uh, syncs and everything in resolutions. So this one kind of get keeps everything matched and uniform to a signal that the TV likes. So, and then of course, like I said from the front, our RCA switch box. We got all of the RCAs coming in from all the different machines. That includes the Dreamcast, uh, the MSX's audio, because it comes over the RGB output from the MSX. It feeds its audio over it. So we pull it from here and go into the RCA. And of course, master back down to here. Uh, there's the VGA switch box. So we have the output over on the far left there, A and B, which are She-Hulk and Dreamcast accordingly with two extras for any additional additions. Our five port uh, HDMI switcher with all of our labels on it. One free spot back over here. So, and then of course, around back here is our port one and port two uh, serial switching that's happening for the joystick and mouse. So we'll show that for a second. That's the custom one for the 600. Give you an overview there. Uh, this is a spare that's not, well, that came unhooked, but it usually goes right there on the output. So yeah, there you go. That's kind of the in-depth rundown of everything. Uh, just a quick recap again. 
everything comes in gets converted to either HDMI or VGA through either scaling or internal solutions on the machines themselves comes into the HDMI switcher that comes down hits the master scaler goes into the switch box down here splits off and goes to the capture machine over to the left and up then to the TV or well down to the scaler down there which you can't really see from here and up to the TV and that's basically it and then the audio is pretty straightforward everything comes in from the switch box into the DI into the mixer out to capture so there you go there's kind of the mystery of the Tower of Power solved um, I hope that was informative if you have any questions please put them down in the comments and uh, look forward to the next part thank you